pastoral ministry is just impossible. Um, this is what, also what I'm learning, and uh, I mean it in a positive way. You can just list out needs, and they would never end. And we should bring them to God. Um, but, you know, we, we know that verse in Philippians 4, you know, uh, 4 and following, that, you know, be anxious for nothing but in everything, in prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. But I left out a phrase. I left out that two-word phrase, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. My name is John Alexander, and I've been serving as the pastor here at Liberty Church of the River Wards for going on 11 years, and was actually baptized at the church that planted this church 18 years ago. So I've been connected here my whole adult life, basically, and been in Philadelphia 21 years. Um, my wife is Karen, and I got three kids, eight, five, and two years of age uh, that live here in the community with us. So the River Wards uh, is the name for the collection of neighborhoods that uh, line the Delaware River a few miles north of Old City uh, and Center City, Philadelphia. So we're at the crossroads of Fishtown, East Kensington, Port Richmond. It's a very local community and that both is kind of delimiting in some ways, um, but uh, so some of those things are actually really, really good because everything that's impacting the local community, uh, we feel not just on Sundays, but we feel on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And um, we feel it uh, on the way to school and on the way to work and where we go to get a cup of coffee and on the playgrounds. When I was starting in ministry, you know, somebody said to me one time, like, it's all you gotta do is be faithful. You're a mouthpiece of God, just be faithful. And um, let God worry about the rest. You know, pe people come, people go, people accept you, people reject you. You know, just don't worry about it. And it's like, that, that just more and more seems like really robotic advice. You don't say that if your brother leaves the family. So you, you feel like you have brothers and sisters in the faith. You feel like you have children in the faith and, you know, aunts and uncles. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been really hard to, to trust God when you know, relationships in the body are really strained, because these are not just people I see on Sunday. This is our whole life. And it's, uh, it can feel very lonely. I talk to some other people who lead in different ways, like at their job, and there are, there are real similarities. You know, it's, it's hard to be uh, kind of out front leading people caring for them, also challenging them. It's, it's not like other kinds of leadership because the church is a household of faith. I've really realized more and more in the past couple of years how difficult it is to be a member of a church. That's really hard to follow and to love people who are leading you, who are imperfect, who are sinners, like me. It's hard to be a member of a local church. It's also beautiful. And same thing about leadership. And so that's been helpful to see people endure with joy and endure with me with joy. It's just, it's really amazing. But what I'm, what I'm still learning about pastoral ministry, what I'm still learning about the church, learning a lot about myself. I'm very angry and I'm very afraid. And Repentance is not groveling before a merciless critic who's wagging his finger at me. Repentance is a joyful return to my Father who loves me. And if that's true, there is no reason not to. There is nothing to lose. You know, there's everything to gain. And um, it's constant. <laughs> it's just constantly finding out um, how idolatrous I am and how I want my way with this church. It's really a mercy to find out when I, 
when I kind of lose it with somebody on our staff and I have to go back or when I'm impatient with a member. Sometimes I need a week. Sometimes it comes to me in five seconds. Where did I ever get that idea? That they are here to do what I want them to do. It's, it's just, I just forgot. I am here because I'm called to be an under shepherd of uh, the good shepherd. And man, have, has this congregation been patient with me? They've been so patient and it's been beautiful and formative, truly formative. And so um, I'm learning what freedom comes uh, to remember how weak I am and how certain I can be that the last thing I want to do is to have my way with these people. And this is there in our images of salvation. It's a new birth that happens when somebody comes to faith. I'm just the midwife there watching and waiting patiently and I know a little bit of the path of how this thing works. Watching what only can happen by some power outside of me. I'm there to be a servant. Westminster in a lot of ways is uh, where I, I, was, I was challenged to become a student really for the first time. You know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of, I was fine with kind of just barely getting through academically. And Westminster, I don't think it was just for the sake of being a tough program or anything like that, but they really make, make you a student. And, and I think I've also looked back and realized that's kind of what I needed. Some of the things that have really stayed with me is uh, just the idea, that central idea of union with Christ as being, you know, the the main concept of understanding our salvation um, and, and not uh, benefits that are as wonderful as justification by faith, you know, and, um, but, but as justification being like one saving benefit that comes out of our union with Christ along with adoption and sanctification and glorification. That has been a real theological anchor for me when I look at what's happening in ministry. This challenge before me is not just some obnoxious obstacle I got to get past. It's not just something that God's doing to refine me a little bit. This is next in my sanctification, which means in part, this is what's next in working out my salvation. And just the riches of that, you know, a lot of this comes out of Murray, of course, you know, redemption accomplished and applied, but it's everywhere in, in you know, Westminster's, you know, in the Reformed, um, understanding of salvation. We have been saved. Praise God. That's not going anywhere. That's firm. That's accomplished. We are also are being saved and we will be saved. And the fact that salvation is something that's happening now as well as something that has been accomplished has been just really rich in endurance. It's been exciting as I think about what makes me want to quit and maybe otherwise would make me quit. Endurance with joy would be the greatest gift. And um, there's a thousand ways I could fall. Um, apart from God's grace, I will. You know, if not into a sin that'll scandalize the church, I would fall into despair. And um, I feel the pull of either sometimes. And then just the needs, like people are struggling, and people are sinning, and people are under attack by uh, the enemy of our souls. Pray that we would see God's love and God's power um, and God's calling, and that we would endure with joy, and absolutely nothing would, would hinder that. Or in, in like we, we could face the darkest things of our day. We could face the most difficult challenges of our day, we could face the most, the greatest discouragement, but also look around and see how amazingly we've been provided for and how there are constant reasons for joy that make us want to endure. I want to be there enduring with joy, whatever comes. Um, that would be a miracle. So, you can pray for that.